Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about two movies, an animated film and a dramatic film, a live action. The live action film is The Whale, starring Brendan Fraser, who plays a novice gentleman that has been, uh, you know, suffering from uh, depression a little bit because of his the suicide of his boyfriend which has been you know life-changing for him and since then he has gained a lot of weight and he has blamed himself basically for what happened to his boyfriend even though he was the only good thing about uh, the life of his boyfriend which is very uh, strange in the movie and the movie is really weird also because you think it's going to be a tale of someone that hates himself or something like that and there are moments when he certainly does hate himself but overall in the movie he just he just wants to be a positive person and he just wants to leave something behind basically to to be sure that he did something in his life which is very um, you know very it's easy to relate to that because you know as humans i think that we all aspire to leave our mark to leave our our footprint or whatever in the world and it's very you know heavy when you realize that maybe you won't maybe you won't have children so and children is a way you know to leave that footprint or maybe you're not going to have the best job ever and there's a, a really beautiful scene in the movie where you know he he has he's a school uh, college teacher and uh, he teaches uh, how to write and he, there is a scene in which he reads what his students really think um, about about anything to be honest and someone actually says that that I, I I'm afraid I'm, I'm not going to have the fantastic life I would like to have and you know and many people I would say most people fear of that I mean of course uh, those people that are famous famous musicians famous actors famous people in general in sports or whatever they leave the footprint by, by by doing what they do by being actors by being you know football players by being an astronaut by being a scientist or whatever they leave their footprint and people in the future will know who they are but most of us no one will know who we are after we die. Even now in the uh, digi digital age in which we take pictures and make TikToks and make videos and make so much content, that doesn't guarantee that people will know who we are. Maybe this video, for example, will survive in the future, but no one will know who the fuck it am I, <laughs> you know? I am, sorry. And, and that's very interesting. I mean, it's very, it's very profound, the, the film. And I was surprised, to be honest, because I was watching the film and it was like, oh, this is really structured like a play. It really feels like a play. And it is a play. I was surprised to know that it is actually a play. And I also assume that Dan Darren Aronofsky, who actually directs this movie, has always directed uh, original screenplays, I mean, written by him. And he hasn't. I mean, many of his, uh, you know, directorial, um, you know, movies as a director, I mean, he has been doing adapted screenplays or someone else has written the screenplay, for example, for Black Swan and for The Restaurant. It was someone else who wrote the screenplay. And I would argue those are two of the most iconic films in his filmography, along with Where Came For A Dream, which he wrote with someone else. So it's very interesting how you perceive a director and then in reality you're like oh he's more versatile if you will that i that i anticipated he has nothing to do i think with the um writing of this um, um screenplay uh, I, I, I yeah he, he didn't write the screenplay that was how samuel the hunter based on a play by uh, himself to be honest so that's very appropriate of course and i guess he must have had some um, you know, insight on who should play every character. And I have to say that after watching Brendan Fraser accept a bunch of awards and he's always crying so emotional and I'm like, okay, calm down, Brendan Fraser, because this cannot happen every time you win something, like breathe or something. But now I get it. I kind of get it because, of course, Brendan Fraser was out of the film industry of for many reasons one of the he, the reasons was his physicality but all the reasons why was that he i think he was 
uh, assaulted at some point in his childhood and then he was viewed as a has-been and that you know most projects didn't really match with the image that people had of him so you know it was very tough and he was just like okay whatever I'm, I'm, I'm out of here and I guess he had other issues and personal problems which I will not discuss because that's his thing but of course he had a lot with that he had a lot to bring to this character and many people criticize like oh you should have cast a fat actor you know an obese actor in order to to have someone that knows what that's like but in acting I have to say and I, I, I'm a gay guy I have to say that I don't think that you have to cast a gay person for a gay role or an obese person for an obese role is that uh, like the ideal of course but there's also experience there's also like the way you approach a, a, a project so there are many variables that can happen and you shouldn't restrict who gets access to something I mean that that's not I mean except the the for example the 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 character is written as Asian for example so you should cast an Asian person of course not someone pretending to be Asian or someone pretending to be black or you know something crazy like that no that's something else but you know I don't have a problem with Brendan Fraser in this I think it's a fat suit but in some moments it looks like CGI I mean it's very interesting how they did it. if it's actually a suit and everything this movie should win best makeup for sure I mean it's really really good in that aspect and again the performance is fantastic I mean he he doesn't really do everything you think he's going to do but he does a lot with the character and it's very interesting especially how he interacts with people around him namely uh, his nurse played by, masterfully by Hong Chao Hong Chao is a fantastic actress and every single studio should be looking after her to, to, to play everything in, in, in anything basically she's a fantastic actress I really like her and Sadie Sink uh, playing her uh, his daughter who, I mean, Sadie Sink is basically playing the same character she plays in Stranger Things, but grown up, and that's fine. I mean, I think she has. She's very young. She still has a long way, a long way to go in her career, and she's going to grow and she's going to show a lot more range. So it's fine. Her performance is fine. So is uh, Ty Simpkins and Samantha Morton. Although, I have to say that Samantha Morton is fantastic here. She's she's one of those actresses that you see her and you're like okay this movie is going to be uh, at least good because she's here I mean she's a fantastic actress that can not do anything wrong to be honest she has a very small role but it's a very powerful scene in which she's in and I really appreciated her, uh, her presence there this movie was not nominated for best picture and I, I'm kind of sad because I, I think it, sh it should have been it, it deserved it it's also nominated again for best makeup and best supporting actress and best support and best leading actor which it will probably win I think Brendan Fraser might win the Academy Award and that's fine that's great for him I, 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 I I'm really glad and I hope we see him in more projects. This movie is very recommended. It's very heavy at some points. It's really like, it makes you watch. It makes you go through stuff. But stay with it because although it's hard, you should really face life as it is and not as you wanted it to be. And that's the cool thing about movies like this, that you see life, you see the truth. You don't see these... Uh, you know, nice little pastel colored uh, reality that we sometimes watch, see in, in media or in, um, you know, social media and in other movies. This is like life life. And it's very interesting to, to, to see how a person just one, basically gives up, but at the same time he, he's not giving up, he's just leaving a legacy in some way or that's what he wants at least and it's very interesting and I think you should respect the decisions that everyone makes for their lives uh, because you don't know what their lives have actually been especially for themselves so it's very interesting it's very moving very recommended movie
The second movie I'm going to talk about is Puss and Boots, The Last Wish, which was amazing and hilarious to watch. I had a, such a great time watching this movie. I laughed at every moment, especially when Jiminy Cricket appears, because I thought that was so absurd, the character. I mean, Antonio Banderas and Salma Hayek uh, have a fantastic like rapport in anything that they do. I mean, they can do anything at this point, and I would like watch it because they they have such chemistry between them uh, them and of course with Harvey Guillen now from uh, In the Shadows. Uh, uh, I forget the name of that show, but what what we do in the shadows? That's he's a fantastic actor and he's a, one of those Latino actors that I I think he has a long ways to go still. He can do many other characters and we might see a fantastic bright future for Harvey Guillen to be honest. I, I think it is a very exciting uh, actor right now. He's LGBT, he's uh, a bigger uh, person and that's great. He's, he's really cute actually and he's very talented, he's very funny and in this movie playing Perrito he's just fantastic. I, I, I adored it and I, I really love the story although at some points it gets a little bit boring, a little bit boring, but it's not the worst thing ever, especially the part with uh, Goldilocks and the three bears. I'm like, yeah, did, did, did we really need that? Maybe just focus on the three main characters and the villain instead of with another group. I understand the message that they want to send, but I'm like, let's save it for Puss and Boots 3 or something because apparently there is going to be a Puss and Boots 3 and a Puss and Boots uh, you know, universe along with Shrek along with many other characters and that's very exciting because that's a world I would really like to go back to because that was amazing it's very recommended of course um, it's nominated for best animated feature film which I don't think it's going to win sadly the animation here is beautiful it's really reminiscent of uh, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse I really think it's very similar because it kind of has like CGI but it's like hand drawn to it's very mixed and, and I really like that it's a very interesting way to see things and and this movie also has very interesting themes like death for example and it's really interesting to explore death in an animated film with a character like Puss and Boots I mean it's really fun so I, 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 re I had a fantastic time watching that movie and it's not a long movie which is also very great so watch that I wish it could win that Academy Award it's not that's for Pinocchio but whatever this movie is amazing please watch it uh, if you if it's still in theaters near you you might watch it then uh, there or just watch it in I think it's in on iTunes or something so you can purchase it and watch it because it's really really fun so those are my recommendations this time two fantastic movies to be honest please comment down below whatever you thought about them and uh, yeah please follow me and like and all of that thank you so much goodbye